customarily, if someone were to put me in front of a microphone and would very quickly position her body right there with, um, so that she could do real-time editing with either <laughs> I, I, unrequested editing. So, um, Anne couldn't be here today. So, um, so I made some notes, a lot of notes, so that I could um, remember all the things I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> we're, we'll see how that goes. Um, thank you for being here. This is um, humbling, to say the least. Yeah, I wish everybody could stand here and feel the weight and the love of this community. Thank you. Ann and I had a deal. We promised each other that whichever of us was left standing, that we would make certain that this event was not simply a, um, a tribute to human personality or personal characteristics or eagle strength, all of which might obscure a deeper reality. So today is my attempt to make good on this promise. Anne was well aware uh, every day when she woke up, and I can tell you literally burst out of bed, <laughs> that she was getting up to go play the role of Anne St. John in all of our lives. Anne St. John was a bigger than life personality that seemed to intrude upon and transform everything and everybody she encountered. Anne would certainly be grateful that we're talking about her personality today. However, it was her desire that you might also know something of the foundation of Anne St. John, the essence, the core, the center, and what it was that fed the role of Anne St. John, the one we all knew and loved. Anne was an extraordinary force, not because she had a big personality, but because her bigness was not centered in personality. It was centered somewhere deeper. She understood that there was a reality in life that could not be grasped by the five senses. Now, while she was the master at managing the world through the five senses and emotional currency, her heart of hearts resided always elsewhere. Anne's essence was never born and will never die. It has neither beginning nor end. Essence is a part of forever. It cannot be destroyed or lost. Now, at this stage in life, I grasp how little can be reliably communicated through human language. This truth weighs on me today. I also grasp that sometimes a picture or an image can communicate instantly and at a depth that words cannot reach. So, I wish to um, 
share with you three pictures, the first of which you have in the front of your program. And the picture on the front of the program is the Anne St. John, the personality that most of us knew and loved. Make no mistake, this Anne was real and is forever imprinted on our hearts. However, the other Anne is represented by the two pictures on the back of the program. Now these images, one as a child, one as an adult, reveal an honesty and a depth often hidden as we each learn to play the role of being adults. Please note the gaze. Anne came into this world grasping a depth that saw beneath the surface of life, even though she was the most skilled at fooling around on the surface of life. Her foundation, her essential reality, always rested, as it does now, in a deeper place. I wish to explore that into which Anne's eyes are gazing, the reality that was the foundation for this extraordinary personality and human being. To do so, we must talk about that which cannot be talked about if we are to properly understand the essence of Anne. Now, I appreciate that there are many here today who may not be comfortable with what we could call God talk. Now, Anne was very comfortable with God talk and had been trained since early childhood to grasp in her own personal experience the reality pointed to and addressed with such poetry. Because this poetry was foundational in her interior programming, we will not avoid it here. Even though she was very comfortable never to share it in a way that she was very careful never to share it in a way that would make someone else uncomfortable. So if you struggle with such poetic language, simply substitute G-O-D for, with the word reality. Or, uh, to get closer to Anne's relationship, a personal love for ultimate reality. And you will get the feel. I wish to read an excerpt from a journal page written by Anne at age 25. She had just moved to Bloomington, had no local friends, had yet to receive her first paycheck. She was living in a small apartment on Rogers Street, had a multi-layered and evolving relationship with me. Here are the entries. Let's see if this works. I have decided to live only my life. First and last, that is all I can do. I have decided to fill my life with loving, enthusiastic people. I have decided that needing people is a sign of strength for me, not weakness. The world is in great need of my talents, my skills, and my passion. I cannot afford to wait for anyone. To waste such a life would be the ultimate insult to God. I have learned that life alone is abundant. I choose to share my life. I cannot afford to wait for anyone. To waste such a life 
would be the ultimate insult to God. I have incredible skills inside of me. The more I live life, the more skills I discover in me. I also know that I share more of my life when I have someone who is committed to loving God with me. Waiting to live life really is the ultimate insult to God. Now I share that because this, this statement reveals in the heart of this young woman the beginning of the trajectory that resulted in what you feel around you today in this room. Most of you did not catch the error in the obituary. The error was in relationship to Anne's age. Many of you are not aware that Anne was only 10 years of age. <laughs> yes, at, at the completion of her life, uh, she did inhabit a 58-year-old body. But Anne was only 10. It might also be said that Anne was an ageless being. Anne was a paradox. Anne came into this world with a very old essence. Unlike most of us, she did not come into this world to take a personal growth journey. She came into this world to take a lot of other people on a growth journey, <laughs> as she continues to do in this moment. Anne did not come into this world to personally change. She came into this world to change the world. Many of us, as you have heard today, have shared the privilege of being in Anne's presence or being the recipient of a collision with Anne as she demanded change and growth from us. Anne was an old, ageless being. Yet, paradoxically, at heart and in truth, Anne was only 10. I struggled personally with this special secret for many, many years. <laughs> if this is confusing to you, it was to me as well. On our honeymoon, we watched the movie Big with Tom Hanks. It is the story of a 13-year-old boy whose wish to become big was granted. On the outside, he looked like a full-grown adult. On the inside, he was a 13-year-old child. Now, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. You will have a new appreciation for Anne. I had no idea when I first watched the movie Big, I was about to step into the script for the next 30 years. <laughs> A child takes everything literally. They take the world literally. They take their feelings literally. They take their thoughts literally. They take their relationships literally. They take their friends literally. They take trust, morality, promises, and religious instruction, literally. The reason many of us are here today is because Anne spoke with a true voice. She spoke of literal reality. 
Often her words presented an innocent inaccuracy because Anne had only limited interest in the minute details. She was never interested in the 10,000 good and logical reasons why something could not be done, especially if it was the right thing to do. She spoke with a true voice because her words were grounded in a deeper truth the truth of the heart. It was that true voice, in one sense, the voice of a child, unpolluted by the complexities and nuances of adult perspective that penetrated and transformed our lives. Anne spoke truth to each of us, especially when we did not choose to see it ourselves. The world of a child and the world of an adult are different. The adult often lives in their head, attempting to find or create meaning in a seemingly empty and meaningless world. Anne took life literally. The meaning of life for Anne was not something out there to be discovered or debated. The meaning of life was not to be experienced after she was dead in some universe next door. The meaning of Anne's life was always right in front of her. The meaning of Anne's life was her life. As Emily pointed out, what, what is so real? What is so real that you and I choose to take it literally in our lives? What is it in our literal lives to which we assign absolute value? What is it in our literal lives that we assign the value of the absolute. As Emily expressed, Anne understood that she was the hands of God in this world. To enter the abundance of that consciousness in the light of the ultimate, you and I are left with the legacy and the imperative of Anne's example, to become as little children again, to take life literally. Thank you, Anne. While a child takes everything literally, and this was true of Anne, she married Mr. Metaphor. Over the next 30 years, we took each other on a journey, <laughs> the repercussions of which will not be unraveled in my lifetime. <laughs> and now, irony of ironies, Anne has left us. In leaving us, Anne has become a mythic figure, a metaphor calling us to a deeper place within the context of our own lives. Anne has stepped out of the literal and into the mythic, into the metaphoric, out of time and into timelessness. Anne is now a transfigured one. She has become a messenger of the deep. Now, if you drive down our street these days, there's a reasonable chance you may catch a glimpse of me standing in our, the picture window of our living room looking out into the extraordinary garden Anne created. The, the center point of the garden is a weeping cherry tree casting a shadow over a flowing water feature with lots of huge hosta and a snowball bush and sunflowers and all kinds of annuals and perennials and 
and a bird sanctuary and a sitting bench and lots of big rocks. And all of this invites one's vision into a garden that is both paradoxically wild and structured. Now this space provides habitat for countless yellow and red finches and woodpeckers and cardinals and robins, hummingbirds, squirrels, rabbits, uh, chipmunks, frogs, dragonflies, uh, as well as boundless edible temptation for the deer wandering out of the meadow and down the street. Now for those of us privileged to encounter this space, it provides an interior retreat a place of rest and peace. This garden provides an appropriate metaphor for Anne's life. I have experienced the, the great privilege of living in Anne's space for 32 years. However modest our surroundings or limited our resources, Anne habitually took the greatest eyesore and transformed it into the most beautiful space in our home, in our yard, in our business. She also did this, as you have heard, with the children and adults in her care. She did this with me. Anne was a radical eradicator of weeds. You do not wish to be a weed in Ann's garden or her business. The wrath of Ann is legendary to those in her inner circle. Today, you are Ann's garden. I am Ann's garden. We are gifted to have been nurtured and pruned in her care. So now I, I wish to invite us into an exercise. Communicating matters of the deep is always a challenge. The gift of an event like this is that everyone shares a consciousness that something is missing. Someone is missing. The shadow of an absence covers our hearts. You can feel it. I can feel it. In this quantum age, we human beings are mostly confused about how to ritualize a rite of passage like the one we are experiencing. Is appropriate to hurt? and grieve, and cry, and acknowledge our wounded hearts as necessarily we release the previous relationship we shared with Anne. That which will not be again, will not be again. That which was once visible, and touchable is now invisible and subtle beyond the senses. Anne is now a messenger of the deep, forever at home in the infinite. This is a, a good place to affirm that it is okay to talk to dead people. Human beings have been practicing this practice since death broke the heart of the first loved one. Talking to dead people is not only therapeutic, it can also provide a glimpse of a relationship with the infinite. Millions of people around the world today are talking to Jesus, the Buddha, Muhammad, and many other lesser-known entities. Part of what it means to become a saint is that your essence intervenes in the lives of the living after you are dead. And lots of living people 
keep talking to you, asking for your counsel, even though you are physically absent. And of course, we all understand that Anne has always been a certain kind of saint, growing into her assigned name as a Saint John. <laughs> Therefore, in conclusion, I ask you to join me as we share an interior guided journey, an exercise releasing Anne to a new reality as we begin to practice our new relationship seeking to appropriate her enduring imprint upon our lives. It is important to remember in this exercise that we have no idea what we are doing. But that's okay. Give yourself permission to go along with the experience. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. At the end of the exercise, there will be a short period of silence within which you can rest in your new relationship with Anne. When you hear some music, you may continue with your eyes closed or allow them to open whenever you wish. So please take a moment, find a comfortable position in your chair, and at this time, allow your eyes to gently close, and your attention to rest upon your breath. As you inhale deeply into your interior and exhale fully into this shared space, allow your attention to be guided to your center by the flow of the breath in and out. Allow your consciousness to rest upon these words I speak. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for taking us on a journey, a journey into life, a journey into death, a journey deep into ourselves, a journey deeper than our thoughts, deeper than our feelings, deeper even than these broken hearts. Thank you. In this deep, silent place, we release you from time and space we release you from a physical body. We release you from this huge personality, all its strengths, all its weaknesses, its likes, dislikes, its propensities. We release you from the service to others that drove your life quest. We honor your completed mission among us. You dwell now in the ultimate. You are free. You are at home in timelessness. Your life in time is complete. Forever unchanging, you are transfigured. We release you to the infinite. You are now a place in our consciousness where, from time to time, we might catch a glimpse of the infinite as we invite your presence and hear again your voice. And you gave us a prototype of a life well lived, a life of service, a life lived on behalf of others, for this, we are grateful. 
we now practice our new relationship with you. A relationship that is invisible, infinite, interior. In this silence, we allow a new relationship to the one whose presence and essence remains in our lives to be embedded in our hearts. You are now and forever a messenger of the deep. Thank you and